It, it looks really just like someone's house, doesn't it? Oh, that is quite a big rock. Oh my God. Hi, I'm Lavi and this is Oli. We are attempting a new world record to become the youngest pair to circumnavigate the globe by motorcycle. Click the subscribe button to follow our adventure around the world. See you later! Good morning world! Welcome back to the channel. It's day number 16! Yes! <laughs> so yesterday was a complete disaster. It's raining. We're just gonna wait here a minute and see if it stops. Put our rain jackets on. raining for the whole day pretty much um, I will show you where we went but we really didn't think that it was worth making an episode about it it was just getting from one place to another in the rain really uh, nothing worth uh, actually recording yes yes and we had to make sure that our equipment is safe packed away because we had some issues before like that um, the mics weren't working and we just don't want that our um, equipment breaks. But we did stay last night in a beautiful uh, Airbnb here in the town of Sulignac. Um, I think uh, the owner told us that it's about a 500 year old uh, place and it's just on this beautiful little street where at the end of the street is actually an abbey where monks are still living. So this is like a beautiful medieval French street and it was a very, very comfortable room. <laughs> I think every house in this area is probably between 500 and 1,000 years old. Look. Beautiful, peaceful and historic. But let me show you where we're gonna be heading today. So yesterday, after staying at my friend's place for a few days, we made our way 147 miles all the way down, continuing down through the center of France, coming into the south now. Uh, we just went past Poitiers and we went through Limoges and this is where we stayed last night and today we actually don't know how far we're going to get but we are starting by visiting this place right here called Grotte de Lascaux. But I'll tell you more about what Grotte de Lascaux is when we hit the road. So let's go! The camera rolling! <laughs> The world is full of hills, isn't it? Yes. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> I'm ready to go. Okay, awesome. Chauffeur. <laughs> Grotte de Lascaux, s'il te plaît. Oui, on y va. <laughs> so let me tell you a bit more about where we're going today. So the Lascaux Caves, or Grotte de Lascaux in French, are a series of prehistoric caves with more than 600 wall paintings from something like 17,000 years ago. So very, very old cave paintings. This is basically the most famous uh, cave paintings in Europe. There's so many of them and the level of detail, um, it looks super impressive. Now, I'm not sure if you're actually allowed to visit the original caves anymore. Uh, we'll have to find out more when we get there. But uh, I know that they've done some reproductions of the inside of some of the caves. So we're just going to head over to there and we're going to go check it out and see what we can see. So we've got 37 miles to reach the Lascaux Caves. So uh, 
Let's do it. Let's do it. <laughs> We've seen the sun again. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> my life makes sense again. Oh my God. It's such a difference. It's been so gray the whole of yesterday. So gray this morning. It's nice to see the first, first glimpse of sunshine coming back. Yeah, motorcycle touring in the rain is not that fun. <laughs> no, it's not that fun. This, this is a very sunshine type of thing, isn't it? You know you're outside. This is the type of thing you need the sunshine to make it really beautiful. So please give us more. <laughs> it's the rising sun shining in the dark. I have an important announcement to make as well and that is that we have reached 1,000 miles! <laughs> yes! <Woo! laughs> so just 29 times more what we just did. I would say quite easy, hey? <laughs> <laughs> yep, 29 times more and we're around the world. Yes! There we go. But finally the landscape is starting to change from just the uh, flat farm countryside. We've got a lot more hills coming up. We've got a lot more trees. It's starting to be a little bit more wild. Maybe we'll even have a chance to do a wild camp before we leave France. But yeah, it's difficult because um, you have to make sure that you're not camping on private land or on um, yeah government. Land. Public land. Public land, yes. It's a little bit difficult in a lot of countries in Europe with wild camping. There's not a huge amount of wild land, wilderness space where you can just go and pitch up a tent. You know, it's whether you're in a park or private land or a farm. So, yeah, so far we haven't managed to sort of find something, you know, easy to wild camp. Um, yeah. But uh, I'm sure there's going to be many opportunities to come. Yes. Yeah. So we've entered the area of Las Go. And first we're going to go to this place, which is called Las Go 2. Las Go 2. Which I think has a massive replica of one of the largest, most impressive caves in the Las Go Caves. So I think, although you can't visit the original caves, I think that you can visit this big replica of the cave. But uh, we're going to go up to Lasco 2 and uh, find out a little bit more. Parking. Probably just park here then. Cool. So we chained up our little bumblebee and Fingers crossed, everything will be fine. <laughs> it's the first time that we leave Bumblebee on the side of the road without us taking care of it. Okay, so we found out a little bit more about this place. This is Lasco 2. It was built in 1983 because the original cave has actually been closed since the 1960s. It was only open for around 20 years. Uh, and then because it had so many visitors, uh, it got really degraded. It got really sort of, you could hardly see the original paintings anymore. So they closed it completely and uh, restored it back to its like former glory so that it could continue to be studied. And then they built this place so that people could experience what it's like inside the cave. So they've built like a big replica of the main room. So we'll see this place. And then there is actually another place down in the valley where they've done a bigger sort of museum with a lot more info and everything like that. So we'll check out this place first and then we'll head down into the valley and check out that place. So the tour just starts in a minute, but they told us it's just in French. So let's see how much we understand. <laughs>
Back to the light. Yeah. Goodbye, Lasco 2. <laughs> On the road again. So we have finished our tour of Lasco 2. So it was like a one hour guided tour, totally in French. We kind of were just trying to just look at the prehistoric wall art and try to sort of imagine what she was explaining about it. <laughs> but it's really cool, inside there, they actually made an underground replica of a part of the original cave, which is called like the Sistine Chapel of the prehistoric world. So it's really like an impressive, big open cave and they've basically recreated the entire thing as the cave looks like for real everything made out of the original materials um, like the ochre and the earth that they used to paint all the walls so when you're inside there I thought that it was really really realistic and really felt like you were inside what would be the original cave oh this by the way is the more modern Lasco Museum or Lasco 4. I think this one was built around five, six, seven years ago. In the end, we're not gonna go to that museum because it's a separate tour. It's a one and a half hours tour. Again, I think it's not in English, it's in French. On the more modern Lasco Museum, they've actually recreated most of the cave, so a lot more than the one we went to, but it's just sort of in a museum setting, so they've sort of have panels of the cave above. So I think the two experiences would be very different. You can imagine that like 17,000 years ago, they would have been like, that's how they would have seen it. That's the only way they would have seen it, with like a fire torch in the hand as they were painting it and as they were showing their friends, oh, look at this bison I drew. You know, that would have been the way that they experienced it with all the flickering of the fire and the changing of the light you know so I thought that was really cool that she started it like that we went into the dark and then she lit this torch and it was like ah the cavern so now we have actually rooted ourselves to what will be if it works out our first wild camp in France. Uh, we looked on iOverlander and we picked a spot which says uh, in the description that it's sort of a down a dirt track and it's like in a forest and that uh, there's a few people that say that they've kind of camped there without any problems and that it's fine to camp there so it's about 70 or 80 miles from here so we're going to check out this wild camp space so we're going to see how it looks uh, and if it all goes well, we'll have a nice peaceful forest camp for tonight. Tourists, block the road. <laughs> Look how sunny it is right now. Oh my God. It's like a different world to what we had this morning and definitely to what we had yesterday. From the cold rain to sunburn in the same day, the summer is back, baby.
All right, the wild camp place that we found on Iovalander is uh, should be just coming up on the right somewhere. Peshon, this way it says. But that's also very much looks like a house. I mean, we can go down it and see. Because it says Chambre de Haute and it says Peshon this way as well. Okay. So let's see. It looks really just like someone's house, doesn't it? Hmm. Mm hmm. I think uh, not the right place. <laughs> okay, let's go on to the other road, shall we? Try that out. Doesn't look like it's going to be the right way. This is definitely just definitely just a house yep okay so we just met these two here in front and they have said they have said to us that indeed you can camp down here and they've told us the little road to go down and then they said they're gonna meet us down there to show us the place down round and then in here haha it's a little bit off-road for us isn't it but I'm um, I'm just about managing and as long as there's no giant rocks like the last time then uh, I think we'll be okay so yeah the owners just told us that they're walking their dogs and they're gonna come down to where we're gonna go now oh that is quite a big rock oh my god Yeah, nice and slow. <laughs> it's just about all right. <laughs> oh, oh, I can see some sort of tower here. Yes. Ah, okay, here we go. <laughs> we found paradise. <laughs> so we ended up. Uh, actually going to the place, the original place that we had found on Iovlander and um, the owner was out walking his dogs. Um, his name is Ward and he's from Belgium and he just said yeah yeah come down the road, come, come to the bottom and uh, you know come come stay at my place no problem. And you can have a room for tonight if you want, don't worry about your tent, you can just stay actually as long as you want if you want to. And so he offered us the room and he told us a little bit about this building as well. The Took us on a tour. Exactly, a tour around. We will show you a tour around uh, tomorrow actually, not tonight <laughs> anymore because it gets dark and we really have to go <laughs> to bed soon. But the building is like 500 years old and he has seven hectares of land here and it's absolutely unbelievable there's like a, a medieval tower behind um, it's a it's a pretty incredible place it's yes. absolutely amazing here beautiful so that's it for today's episode we hope you enjoyed it if so then please subscribe to the channel um, like and comment and all these things we will see you next time <laughs>